So construction drawings uh, are typically inclusive of, and then we have a bunch of different things here, full performance specifications. Details fully showing all pertinent information shown in one place but referenced in multiple sheets. Uh, shop drawings bound in after structural but before MPE drawings, so mechanical plumbing and electrical drawings. Demo and landscape drawings prior to the architectural drawings. Schematic building sections with references and notes. So these are all in here to sort of kind of uh, try to throw you off essentially. Um, the, the deal here is um, some of these sound right, but they're actually not right. Some of them sound wrong, but they actually are right. Uh, so just super fast, let's run through it. Uh, full performance specifications. Performance specs, um, most projects in the United States are not performance specs. Most of them are more of a descriptive spec. So if you think of the specs that you've done before, they're probably doing something like saying, okay, we want to put in carpet. Here's three choices of carpet that uh, you can choose from. And that way the contractor has a little bit of range, but they're choosing from these three choices. A performance spec is where you say, we want the carpet to be this strong, have this kind of backing, be made from this kind of material, find a good one, essentially. So uh, it's a very different approach, and the, there's a bunch of reasons why you might want to do it. The idea is that you can get lower prices because it gives much more flexibility to the contractor, but it, it is not something that is specifically done uh, most of the time. If you're in Europe, it's like parts of Germany do uh, performance, specs, performance specs all the time, and there are aspects of performance specs that are done all the time in the United States, but it's not something that's happening all the time. So uh, full performance specifications are not typical uh, in, in the United States. So uh, I, the first one there, is not part of it. Um, and then details fully showing all pertinent information shown in one place, but referenced in multiple sheets. Um, the, the the thing that the issue that I have with this one would be the word all, um, but uh, but this one is essentially correct. Um, what this is saying is there's a bunch of pertinent information in order to get a point across, and we put it someplace. So maybe it's a door schedule, maybe it's a detail about how the flashing works, um, but that information shows up in the right place and it shows up once. That's a key part of how NCARB and AIA think you should be doing your drawings. So two is absolutely uh, true of what things should be typically inclusive of. Um, now, a little aside about that, uh, every project I've ever done, um, I've had a situation where I stood on the job site and uh, saw somebody doing something and I said, and they asked me a question and I said, well, what's it say on the drawings? And they say, Oh, the drawings, yeah. yeah. Let me go see if I can find the drawings. Find drawings. Um, and uh, in that process, you realize, really, you're only going to put everything in one location on a set of drawings. Um, you're not going to, like, actually give it, make it easier for people to find information. So everybody does this a little differently, but that's not the point. The point is the exam is about how you're supposed to do it, the technical way you're supposed to do it. Uh, any measurement, any, any dimension is supposed to be in one location and one location only. Uh, all the specific information, one location, one location only. There's a few caveats to that. Um, some overall dimensions, often you put those on multiple sheets so that people can reference from one sheet to another easily. Um, but essentially, uh, everything goes in one spot. Three, shop drawings bound in after structurals. Shop drawings are actually not part of the construction drawings. They are part of the overall uh, set of documentation, um, but they are not your drawings. They're uh, stuff that is given to you, so they are not bound into the set uh, until the very, very end, but that's, uh, that, that would actually be at the very end, so three is not true. Uh, demo and landscape drawings prior to architectural. Yeah, the, the first sheet will always be the title sheet, which is technically an architectural sheet, uh, but then after the first sheet, then comes uh, uh, demo and landscaping and civil and a couple of other things potentially, depending if you, if you have them. Uh, then comes the architectural set, then structural, then MPE, then fire protection, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, four is actually correct. And then five, schematic building sections and references with references and notes. That sounds sort of weird. Like, why schematic? This is, you know, this is construction drawings. Why would they be schematic? Well, it turns out that actually that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. The, the sections uh, are really meant to be essentially uh, an index sheet 
for where all your other pieces of information are. Um, so they're there to do two things. One is to show you the sort of general volumetric sets of relationships and also to say, oh yeah, there's an interesting thing happening here at the parapet. Go look at uh, you know sheet uh, A35 uh, to to find out more about that, right? So it's a place where you can send people to specific locations. So uh, 5V uh, is absolutely correct. Uh, it's a place for references and notes uh, with schematic uh, building sections. Um, so that puts us at uh, what two. Five, four and five, which would be uh, D. So it looks like we got, uh, I got, I got to put another clean sweep on this one. Um, ben has an interesting question. He asks, this format of I, 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 B, B, uh, is that still something that, uh, is that a format that they still use? He had thought that maybe or that that's not used anymore. Yeah, they, they've started to phase it out. Um, uh, and they now have some where they're fill in the blanks and they have some other ones that are uh, kind of similar along those lines. So it's a more open uh, set of possibilities. Um, last I knew, they hadn't taken them all out. Now maybe, uh, maybe they have finally done that, um, but uh, they, you know, they have a giant pool of questions and they slowly uh, change them out. Uh, and so last I knew they were still, some of these questions uh, were, were still there. But also, I actually think even if it's not uh, the direct question type um, that you get, I, I think it's a useful way to start looking at, like, how do, how do you strategize through the kinds of information that you get, and, and how do you compare this to that? So they're, I think they're useful from the standpoint of kind of forcing you to think through how these questions kind of get asked. Um, but yeah, they will eventually be uh, completely gone. And then um, Jordan asked for a little clarification. Are the uh, so uh, I there full performance specifications? His questions of are the specs part of the drawings? Is his question? Uh, yeah, actually, in, in that case, I mean, it's a little the construction drawings are being used. That term is being used a little loosely. Um, but if you actually said uh, um, the construction set. Um, uh, then the specs would definitely be part of it. Construction drawings, that's a very good uh, question. I think it's a, a, you, you could play that either way, so they would probably be more specific. Um, but uh, if it was con the construction set or the contract documents, then it would absolutely include the specifications. Two. Let's see, two, four, and five. So that's D. Right, now, thank you, Mike. Uh, and thanks to all of you who've tuned in. And if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 52715webinar. That's 52715webinar. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit AIA.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching. <laughs>